All right, so this is going to be an experimental talk on uh, calibrating a two qubit gate on a superconducting uh, system. So before we start, uh, a bit of uh, about us. So uh, Anyon Systems. So we are a company that builds uh, superconducting uh, qubits, uh, quantum computers. Uh, what you see here is a rendering of our cube system uh, that's currently being built uh, in Montreal. Um, so it's a turnkey uh, superconducting, supercomputing, sorry, uh, quantum computer uh, that's aimed for uh, data centers and, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, to be deployed at data centers and uh, supercomputing super computing facility. Um, so our, our aim in the company is that if we uh, are, uh, you know, aiming at building these large scale systems, you know, towards tens and thousands of qubits, uh, you need to develop the, the, the technology and the know-how on all the aspects of that machine. Um, so that's why in a company we have, you know, teams dedicated to nanofabrication, to cryogenics, electronics, and quantum design. Um, so basically every component that you have on that machine, uh, from quantum processor to dilution refrigerator, is designed, you know, built and assembled by our team. Okay, so that being said, um, there was not much about superconducting qubits at the conference, so we might as well go back to a bit of, uh, of the basics. Um, so we're going to make our qubits out of these unharmonic LC oscillators, right? So how do you make this? So suppose here, uh, my slide is just a ground plane, superconducting ground plane. Um, I can make a capacitor quite easily. I'm just going to, you know, punch a hole in it. I'm going to create uh, right here, right, an island, and that's going to create a capacitor you know, 2D capacitor, that's really easy. Um, next thing you want to have your inductor. So the inductor is going to be these Josephson junctions. So we're going to have two of them in a loop. Um, that's going to be uh, your nonlinear element to have, you know, an, on our, an harmonic oscillator. Now, the neat thing about this, so this uh, two super, uh, Josephson junction loop, also called a squid, um, is that the frequency uh, will change depending on the magnetic flux that's going inside the loop. So essentially, my qubit uh, is now a tunable frequency qubit. And the way I can tune its frequency is simply, I'm going to come in here with a line. I'm going to push a current. That current is going to generate a magnetic field that's going to go through uh, that loop, and it's going to change the frequency of my qubit. Um, then if I want to apply you know, single qubit gates, then what I need to do is I come in with another element here, a gate line. Uh, that gate line will have a capacitance to my qubit, so I'm going to be able to you know, send uh, microwave pulses to uh, excite and perform single qubit operation. And finally, you know, I need to read out my state. Uh, so at the top here, you're going to have a uh, readout resonator, so essentially a cavity that's dispersively coupled. Uh, so it's going to be allow allowing us to measure you know, a single shot readout stays zero in one of our, of our qubits. Um, so a single qubit is interesting, but a bit boring. So we want to make, you know, large scale quantum processors. Uh, so, you know, you can tile them up as much as you can, you know, de depending on the size of your, uh, you know, your chip. Um, so the moment you have more, essentially you're going to have a capacitance that's going to come up, you know, between these islands. Um, so coupling two qubits is essentially bringing them closer together or not. Um, of course, I cannot physically move them around. I'm, I'm going to have to design this properly. But once it's designed, I'm going to have a fixed coupling between the two. Um, so essentially, this is kind of the simplest thing you could think of doing, you know, as you as you build a processor. Um, now, all of these will be frequency tunable, and this is quite advantageous because you know you might have different problems due to fabrication. You can have defects, so being able to change their frequency. Uh, will be, you know, really uh, advantageous into calibrating your processor. Um, then the drawback of this is that you're going to have a lot of control lines, right? So calibrating that processor will require a lot of work to make sure everything, you know, is on specs. Um, so from there, we can look at, you know, a first native gate, what we could do as a two qubit gate for that system. Um, and simply, you know, the, the simplest thing, so I'm showing here, um, you know, that's a circuit long element model of that, that uh, small qubit. So you have your capacitor, your uh, Josephson junction loop, and I have a coupling, a capacitance between the two. So the simplest gate I can perform would be a swap gate. Essentially, I have two 
qubits that I can tune in frequency. I'm going to bring them, you know, on resonance. I'm going to wait a while. I'm going to change, exchange, uh, you know, popu oops, population, and I go back. Um, you know, main advantage is quite a simple design. Uh, the main drawback here is that your coupling is always on, right? I cannot turn off my capacitor. Um, so the only thing I can do really is play with uh, the frequency of my qubit. Um, so I can, you know, detune them by a lot so they're not interacting so much. Now you can envision that as I increase the number of qubit on my chip, I have the problem of frequency crowding, which is how do I manage to find a configuration of frequency for all my, you know, dozens of qubit, hundreds of qubit, that will make it so that none of them interact. Um, and this becomes quite difficult. Uh, the other thing you're going to have is that if you perform single qubit operation, you can lead to phase error on adjacent qubits. And it's also something that's, you know, quite detrimental for uh, your algorithm. Um, so one way to go past that is that we're going to use uh, a coupling element. So it's an idea that was proposed about four years ago. Uh, and you're going to use actually another qubit. So that's the coupler I'm putting it here. So it's actually another qubit. It's going to be at a different frequency. And I'm going to have the same kind of tuning knob that I can, and I can play with its frequency. Um, so uh, as I'm going to show you, so you're going to have an improved control. So you're going to have a tuning knob on the interaction strength between your two qubits. So that's quite nice. Um, of course, you can just see it by this you know, small picture. I'm going to have a problem of, you know, there's an extra overhead. I have more control lines. I have a more, you know, the footprint on my chip is, is, uh, is larger, right? Um, OK, so what kind of gate you can make with this? Uh, so if you look at this, so I have now you know, three uh, qubits. I have capa direct capacitance, indirect capacitance between these elements. I'm going to require that this qubit is actually at a much higher frequency. You know, I, I don't want to have this guy going into my comput computational space. Um, so if you do, you, know, you do the math, and you can extract here that was shown back in 2018, um, you can extract an effective interaction strength that's going to depend on your uh, coupler frequency. And the neat thing that you get here is that as I bring my, my coupler frequency closer to my qubits, there's a point here where my interaction strength is zero. So I'm effectively closing my coupling between my qubits. I'm isolating each qubit if I'm able to reach that point. Now, if you continue, you bring it even closer and you start to have high coupling strength. So you can... Uh, that way you can find a configuration where I have off coupling and I have a, you know, a fast gate that I can do because my coupling strength is, is quite fast. Um, and this is, you know, it, it's quite an interesting uh, approach in, in doing this. Uh, you could do the math, you would see that the unitary here, here is an FSIM gate. So you can have all the FSIM family uh, that you, you, you can implement. Um, again, you know, the drawback is that I have more control lines. Um, and specifically here, it's something I haven't uh, discussed, but you, you're going to need to be careful about uh, flux tuning. Um, so, you know, I'm calibrating, I can tune the frequency uh, of my qubit with flux, uh, with pushing current onto my chip, but any variation or any, any time dependence on this will also kind of fluctuate my, my frequency. So I need to be uh, quite careful about how I calibrate and how I characterize all of this. Um, so then, you know, you can think about what are the requirements. I have this, this picture, I have this building block, which is pretty nice, but how I'm going to scale up this to, you know, a large scale system. Um, and of course, you know, you want to improve your two qubit gate fidelity. That's kind of a, you know, uh, things that you, you know you, you need to do this. Uh, I would like to limit the number of control lines. I want, you know, my dilution refrigerator to be of, of a reasonable size. My cooling power needs to be accounted for that. Um, and at some point, I need to simplify the calibration. You know, if I have too many knobs, then uh, as was discussed, you know, I'm going to have some calibration matrix that's going to explode, right? And I need to do calibration in a reasonable amount of time that there's less, you know, there's still hours in the day to perform calibrate to, you know, algorithms. Um, so what I'll be presenting is uh, basically the idea that we've came up with was, uh, can we perform similar type of gate, um, but by using uh, microwave pulses on the coupler instead of uh, flux pulse? Um, okay, so to start, we can, you know, use this uh, system. We're just going to look at the spectrum of the system as a function of the, of the coupling frequency. Um, so, first of all, you can look at the, you know, one excitation manifold, and you have what you had in the, in the previous picture. So, 
I have the uh, coupler, which is for detune, and I have my two other, uh, you know, single qubit uh, states. And from there, I can extract the coupling frequency of these. And what you see here is basically I do have an off point depending on the coupler frequency, and I can I can reach a high coupling strain. Um, and this is how then you could perform a gate, as I mentioned. So you start at the off point, you quickly go to an on point, you get the interaction, you come back. Now we can look at a two excitation manifold. So that would correspond to having you know, an excitation on the coupler. So we're gonna focus basically on these state here, where there's one excitation on the coupler and either one on either of the qubits. Um, and what we get here is actually the same kind of shape, right? I do have an off point, so this is great. Um, and I also have an increasing as I'm going to, uh, you know, it's still as a function of qubit frequency. Oops, okay. Um, but you can see that there is a point that I can reach in principle high uh, coupling strength. Now, how would you perform a gate here? Then the scenario will be a bit different. Uh, so we're going to start in the configuration where the coupler is off, right? So no interaction. And then when we apply a gate, a pi pulse on your coupler, or you know, an excitation on the coupler, you go here and you have a higher coupling strength. Um, so that way we should be able to perform an efficient two qubit gate. Uh, so in what follows, basically, we're gonna see, you know, experimental sequence to actually calibrate that. Um, so the experimental sequence will be as follows. So uh, I have two qubits. I'll start with, you know, putting a population on one of the qubits and I'm gonna put uh, a pulse on my coupler. Um, it's worth noting that the chip we're using, you know, for that experiment was not tailor-made for that experiment. So I have two uh, challenges here. One is that I don't have a readout resonator on my qubit, on my coupler. Sorry. So the coupler is meant to just couple, right? I, so I don't have access, direct access to the population on that coupler. Um, and the other thing is that I don't have a gate actually on the coupler because you know, it was meant for uh, standard operation with flux. Uh, so the way we're gonna gate the coupler is actually we're gonna use one of the qubit gate lines. And because there is a small but non-zero capacitance between the gate line of the qubit and the coupler, I'll be able to drive the coupler anyway. Um, okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is, well, we wanna you know, calibrate that pulse here. We wanna figure out what's the, the coupler frequency. You know. um, so as you see here, first of all, we're gonna look, so we, we look at the population of the both qubits and we're sweeping the frequency of that pulse. And you can see that nicely at some point I start swapping population. Uh, so there's already a proof that, you know, what we see from our naive, you know, energy level is, is, is seem to be working. Uh, so we get our frequency. Next thing we're going to do, so then we fix the frequency, we're going to sweep the amplitude, right? And so this is what we have here. So basically we're sweeping the amplitude of the gate pulse and we're seeing, you know, a situation where we have reasonable swapping of the population. Um, so essentially what we've done here is calibrating, uh, calibrated a pi pulse on the coupler without actually using the pi pulse, right? For, uh, the coupler. We're using both qubits that are interacting. Um, so this is nice. So now what we would like to do is, is better understand what's the coupling strength um, that we're, we're extracting, you know, what kind of gate we'll be able to do. Um, so we're actually gonna use the fact that we, we have a tuning knob of the frequency of our coupler um, to actually you know, look at the, the parameter space that's available to us. Um, so we're gonna repeat the experiment and now we're gonna play with the interaction time. It's gonna allow us to determine the frequency and we're gonna play with the bias here to change the coupling frequency. Uh, so first thing, we're gonna do it, but without the gate, right? We just wanna see what's the standard uh, operation of, uh, of the coupler. So here is the population of one of the qubit as a function of uh, the coupler bias, so the coupler frequency and the interaction time. So you see there's a big uh, white area here where you don't see any oscillation. That's your coupler off point. And as you move to the left, as I, you know, I get my coupler closer to my qubits, um, I start seeing oscillation and these oscillations, you know, uh, go faster as I, as I go. Uh, it's worth, forgot to mention here that during the interaction, my two qubits, I bring them on resonance, right? Um, so that shows typical proper operation of, of the coupler. Now we're gonna do the same map but right before we perform that, we apply our, our pulse uh, on the coupler. So we see essentially the same behavior. I have a position here that's where my coupling is essentially off. And as I bring my coupler uh, you know, closer here, I do see an increase 
um, in oscillation, in population swapping. Uh, so from there, you can just take slices and we can extract uh, the coupling strength, um, which you see here with the corresponding colors. Um, so it's worth noting, so that these, these uh, lines, they're calculation using our model. And actually here, we have no fitting parameters. So we just extract the capacitance from our design. We just plug them in our, in our model and we directly have uh, quite a good fit. Um, so you, you might ask why you know, this is not fully flat. Um, and you can actually see here, there's a, a, a good reason for that. Essentially, our pi pulse on the coupler is not a perfect pi pulse. So, you know, when, when I should have, uh, when this should be off, I actually have population on my zero state on my coupler, and I actually have a coupling, you know, non-zero coupling. So that's why I'm seeing these small oscillations here. Um, this is great. You know, the, the proof of concept is working, but I don't have a gate. Reason for that is, well, first, uh, I have a, a you know, a leftover population on my coupler. Um, I don't want that, right? I don't want to have some population on non-computational basis. The other thing is that this gate will, you know, will go on as long as, you know, there's a population of the coupler. There's a T1 associated with that. So it's not something that you would be able to control uh, really well. Um, so the idea to go around this is that instead of applying a pi pulse, we're going to apply a two pi pulse. Uh, so we've already calibrated the pi pulse, so we can, you know, uh, scale the area of the pulse to apply 2 pi on our coupler. So the, uh, this is what we did here. So we calibrate the pulse, and we're going to repeat that experiment as a function of the duration of that 2 pi pulse. So what you see here, again, I see some nice population swapping um, as I increase the pulse duration. So it's always a 2 pi pulse. And there's a sweet spot actually where I maximize this population transfer. And this, this exact frequency, if I can go back, actually matches. Uh, so we are operating you know, the device here, right? So we have zero coupling, or when we're here, we're about three megahertz of coupling. Um, and this corresponds essentially to this 160 nanosecond gate. And, so here, basically, we're showing that you know, we can perform a two qubit gate, we could gate the coupler, and then the system goes back to this, its off state, and, and we're pretty happy with this. Um, what we're less happy about it is that it's a 160 nanosecond gate. That's fairly long. In, in superconducting uh, circuit, typically, you would like to have 20, 30 nanosecond gates. Um, so there's, uh, oops, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's worth noting. Um, here so you would expect in principle smooth you know sign uh, like oscillations here uh, but what we uh, what we see here the, the slowing down is actually an effect of uh, adiabaticity so because the system you know you're performing a gate fairly slowly at some point it's just too slow to have actually the the, the uh, efficient swapping kicking in um, so is it, you know, in the end, is it a valid uh, design? Uh, so we think so, of course. Um, so there's actually an easy way to make this gate faster. Again, you know, th this was tested on processor that was not tailor-made for this. Uh, you could redesign the processor and easily you can look at this capacitor, which is the direct capacitance, capacitance between my two qubits. And simple estimation is if I change by a factor two, which is fairly reasonable in terms of design, I can change my, uh, you know, couple of, my gate time from 160 nanosecond to about 35 nanosecond. And what you see here, these are the same uh, you know, plots I shown uh, before. Um, so it should be possible in the end to have fast gate without requiring uh, of flux tuning on the coupler. Um, so with that, I will conclude. So I hope I could convince you that this protocol. Uh, is, is working fairly well that we can, you know, do a population swapping uh, by uh, gating our coupler. Um, and of course, you know, a next step would be to do uh, proper fidelity to know what's the actual performance of that gate. Um, yeah. And, you know, we are looking for people, if you're interested, go look at our website or you can contact me as well. Thank you.